Hello and welcome to the Six Acre Farmstead. In this video here, I want to know what are you studying? What is your plans for next year? Right now, it's uh, late November. Um, the bees are all put away. Hopefully, I'll have a successful wintering and get them over through the winter. But what are you what are you doing? What are you thinking about? What are you planning on for next year? Uh, for me, I do a lot of studying, a lot of reading. Um, basically, I do it all year round. But this time of year, I'm starting to plan for my next year. Uh, two of the big, one of the big things I'm thinking about is comb honey. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me about, uh, do I sell comb honey? Do I sell comb honey? I tried making it once a couple of years ago, and I had really bad luck about it. But from what I've actually read about and researched uh, through a couple of books I've read, I was going the wrong way of uh, doing it. And uh, me, that I've never done it before, and I haven't really asked my bee club or mentors about their experiences, which I do plan to do. Uh, just want to go over uh, some of the things that I've got going on. But for me, I actually decided to go and go through my beekeeping books and we'll go and go through all that because a lot of you may be beginner beekeepers. Um, some of you uh, who are maybe studying up for further knowledge, maybe for the master beekeepers or maybe an advanced beekeeping for, through your club or through the state. Uh, don't know. Uh, there's other books out there, but I'm just going to go through some of that I currently have. Uh, just keep in mind, though, that one of the benefits of... Uh, I, I, I belong to a, my local beekeeping club, and one of the benefits that we have a library. So if you do belong to a library, you might want to check the library out because this is the off season where you're not really messing with your hives and it's devoting a lot of time getting into them. But you may have a lot of valuable books inside your library that your club spent. And basically the collecting dust because not many people check them out. But you know, reach out to your club librarian, see what books are available and you know might be able to check a few out uh, and garnish knowledge. One of the big things I've also mentioned about beekeeping, especially with me, is there's not a single way of doing everything. There's multiple ways of doing things. Um, and that's what I tell everybody. So this is the way that I do things. That's why a lot of you watch my videos and garner what I do. And you watch this guy over there and watch what he does and this guy over there and watch what he does. Same thing that I do. I take information from this one. I take information from this one. I take information from this one. Uh, pros and cons. And for me, I can read about it, but I want to experiment, experience it uh, firsthand myself and see what the results are and then I can say okay this one worked for me this one doesn't work for me because a lot of things keep in mind are regional some things work in one part of the United States or one part of the world compared to they do where you locally live so uh, just try different things there experiment read about this about maybe different ways of grafting or different ways of swarm control or just whatever it is out there just see what works out best for you there's a lot of things on the market new things coming out even I come up with some different uh, ideas that I try out. I got a few more things that I'm going to be messing with. I was thinking about a new feeder for my two fr my two frame hives that I might even uh, expose, put that out for you guys to get your input on it and see whether it works or maybe you got a suggestion that'd be a little bit better. Don't know, but that'll be for a later video. But for me, I got all the books out here. Let's go over a few things. Um, when I first started off, a lot of recent I mean, YouTube uh, watching things on YouTube. Took a beginner's beekeepers class. Was a newbie, newbie there, and one of the first things books I bought was Beekeeping for Dummies. You can still buy this book here, and I thought it was really really knowledgeable. Is, is part of the dummies books. It's actually a really good book to have, good to read. So if you're a new time beekeeper, you might want to consider the Beekeeping for Dummies book. Uh, another book that I suggest and I read and I highlighted and ate and I garnered a few things after, and I actually got this a couple years ago, was the. Uh, Pennsylvania State Extension uh, Beekeeping Basics book. So if it's for Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, Philadelphia, West Virginia, and USDA uh, cooperating. Um, good spar bomb book. A lot of good information in here, black and white photos, but it's a lot of good information. I mean, I highlighted a lot of it in this book here. But this is the kind of book that actually we give to our new beekeeping uh, students when we do our beekeeping schools. Because uh, it's only about $10, $11 for the thing. So, But I don't think you can find it through Amazon. I'm not exactly sure. It's been a while since we've, we've ordered it. But I think we ordered, we ordered a bunch from uh, Penn State uh, Extension Office, and uh, we had them shipped to us, and I think it's a good valuable. You know, if you're a, uh, even a veteran beekeeper, I mean, for 10 bucks, it's a pretty good book, and I highly recommend it, and it's something to look at. Uh, for those going into advanced beekeeping, some things I bought it for a while, and I just realized this. This is the... Uh, Beekeeper's Handbook. This is one of the books that they recommend reading when you want to advance uh, in your beekeeping knowledge, especially for like the West Virginia State Master Beekeeper. It's one of the books they recommend. This here is an old copy. This is actually the second edition here. And come to find out, they go through the things, that I own the third edition. And I actually own the more updated fourth edition also. There may be a fifth one, but uh, this one here, 
I pick up every now and then and read on and uh, garner a few things. It's just one of these. I've devoted my time to a lot of other stuff, and maybe I'll have to get back into this one here. But the Beekeeper's Handbook is a really good book also. Uh, one of the things I told you I was doing is planning for comb honey. You know, reading up on comb honey, watching a, uh, a bunch of videos on how to produce it. Or, I mean, there's a lot of videos on how to cut it. But how do you set the hive up? And that's something I'm, I'm going to make another video on, my, my directions and plans on. But, you know, one of the <laughs> books that I bought was uh, Cove Honey Production. I bought this book, sitting on it, and uh, hadn't got to it, and just was put away, and, and was not in my mind that I started, hey, I'm going to go uh, and went look at the book. So, unfortunately, I ordered again. So, I actually own two copies of this book here. But it had a really good, a lot of good information in it, and I highlighted a lot this book and actually took a lot of notes and this is where I'm going to develop my game plan on producing comb honey. But like it says, this is one direction. I told you, read up different things. So I found this book here at the local, um, we had our fall conference and I found this, Comb Honey Basics by Lord Lloyd Spear. Lloyd currently owns uh, the guy, the Ross Round Company and he put this little booklet out and little notations I have on producing and uh, making comb honey. I mean, these are all strands, but it's the same concept of uh, setting your hive up, and that's what I was looking at. What, what's the best way to set your hive up to uh, make them produce honey and also look at, prevent them from swarming. So that's one of the things that I got going on there. So this is, I'm doing a lot of research on my comb honey, and hopefully that'll be worthwhile, worthwhile there. Uh, notice a lot of other people are inquiring about the snow grove uh, swarm prevention method. I'm a firm believer in snow grove. There's a lot of people doing OTS. They're doing double click board. There's multiple things, but I'm a big believer in the, in the, the snow grove method. Uh, a few of my mentors in the BB club, uh, they got me onto this. And one of them actually was talking about the books that he had bought and I actually put and bought it myself. This is Swarming, uh, it's Control and Prevention by Ellie Snowgrove. I think it's Ellie, let's see here. Uh, yeah, Ellie Snowgrove. This book was produced, was uh, published back in the 1940s. But it's, I mean, it's really detailed, and there's a few things that I hadn't done with, with my snow grove method um, that I'm going to try to tweak uh, and go by the old school basic methods in snow groving. This is uh, snow groves from uh, England, and uh, this it's, it's actually worked for me the last few years. I built multiple boards. I'll show you how to build the boards. And to further the knowledge, I've got a simple guide and uses to the snow grove board by Wally Shaw, this little booklet. I found this at the fall conference also. And... Uh, I haven't really gone through it in depth yet, but I'll probably read over it and get, take some notes in it. So that's another book on Snugger Principle. So I'll be reading some of those. Maybe I'll, I'll be tweaking. I'll definitely put some new videos out this spring uh, talking about the Snugger Method. And uh, we'll get a game plan. So if you want to do that, just follow along. I've got a lot of other videos there, so just watch them all. And eat. For me, I'm still learning this. That's what I'm still reading on. And just learn with me and, and we'll go from, with me. Uh, another good book that I have here is Stories Good to Keeping Bees. I actually have two copies of this also. Uh, I think this is one of the ones that I bought when I had the uh, uh, Beekeeping for Dummies books that I had bought. So I had read through this here. I was also into chickens at the time. So I've got Stories uh, Guide to Keeping Chickens. And I would hold Chicken Library, which I pretty much got all the chickens. Basically, it's all honeybees now. But Stories Guide to Keeping Honeybees is a really good book there also. Um, Kim Flottam. Uh, had a couple a good book here, The Backyard Beekeeper. So here's the uh, second edition. I uh, read this and highlighted this here, making make notes in The Backyard Beekeeper. And I bought the third edition. So I own both of these here. So you went through there, tweaked a little bit of the information, uh, how it's presented. And uh, definitely good books to buy, good things to have on hand. You know, <laughs> nothing to keep in mind is Christmas is coming and there's a lot of, uh, don't know what, if you don't have any ideas about which books uh, or what you want, you know, those are maybe some basic, easy Christmas ideas that you can give the family members if you want to further your knowledge. Hey, buy me this book, or buy me this book, or even better, ask for a ventilated bee suit. I mean, I, I like mine, so just keep those in mind. Those are big ticket items. Um, <coughs> I've gone to uh, figuring what the best use of my products of high beeswax, candles, and stuff there. So I actually went to Hobby Lobby, used my 40% coupon, and bought beeswax alchemy. Uh, talks about making candles and lotions and balms and salves and perfumes and <coughs> luminaries. Whole, it's got the recipes for everything inside there, so 
Uh, if you have a Hobby Lobby, catch a 40% coupon. That's a good book to have uh, that I suggest, Beeswax Alchemy. Um, another book that I bought from the Backyard Beekeeper, uh, it's the Honey Handbook. Uh, talks all about <laughs> honey, there's recipes and uh, high preparations and just uh, artisanal honey, different uh, floral sources. It's really I thought it was a really good book to have and I'm glad I have this part of my, uh, my library of beekeeping. <coughs> Another book that I happened to come across, and this is one of these, it was a discount book, is went to one of the local Ollie's discount stores, and I believe I found this, was uh, Keeping Bees in Towns and Cities. You know, so, yeah, I live in a country, but there may be some concepts and principles and people who are beekeeping in, in major cities. I watch videos on guys in New York City who are beekeeping, or these metropolitan areas, or rooftop beekeeping. Uh, and that's the other book there, I've got the Rooftop Beekeeper. That I bought from Ollie for four bucks. So, the Scrappy Guide to Keeping uh, Urban Honeybees from Megan Pasca. It was a decent book here talking about, you know, the bees and their floral sources and hearing stories of bees going to candy candy factories and bringing that color back nectar and figure what it was and come to find out it was from candy factories that the bees were visiting. But uh, these are pretty two good books here. Uh, keeping Bees in Towns and Cities by Luke Dixon. And this is the Rooftop Beekeeper by Megan Pasca. Um, another book that I, I got, and I think yeah, this was from Ollie's also here, was Keeping Bees and Making Honey by Allison Benjamin and Brian McCallum. I think this th these were based out of England also, uh, but it was a good <laughs> little basic, basic knowledge of beekeeping, but for four bucks, I couldn't pass it up. And, you know, just one of those things that maybe this guy's, these people here had something I haven't garnered and, uh, and got some information. Probably have read this one here. Um, but don't have any notes on it, but it's one of these things. It's my library. If I want to, I can come back to it again because I own the book. Um, another book, he actually was, this is uh, Swarm Essentials from Stephen Rapaski. Stephen actually came to one of our bee conferences and actually spoke and talked about Swarm. He's, he's uh, I believe, out near the Pittsburgh area. Uh, Swarm Essentials, this was a really good book here talking about swarm ecology. And um, it was just, it was for me, it was a really good book. Uh, and for me, like setting up swarm hives, swarm traps, and what, knowing the, what to look for, and you know, swarms are free bees, so that's a cool thing there. But this is definitely a good book. Uh, swarm Essentials from Stephen Rapaski. Another book that I had bought that uh, because I'm all about looking for free bees, and I haven't done this yet, was Following the Wild Bees from Tom Seeley. I've actually watched this video a couple times on YouTube. And talk about his uh, bee lighting and how to how to go find the wild bees, like setting up in a field looking for the bees, and then uh, trying to figure out exactly where they go and with the direction in the sun and having a compass and marking the bees and all that kind of stuff. There, um, this is something that I have not done. Uh, maybe if I have some free time, uh, that uh, that I'll do that as a final location or while we're uh, a field. Someone lets me set up in the field and then tries to find out where the bees are and knowing that there's no uh, local beekeepers around or no known uh, where the feral colonies are, if they're in a wall or a building, if, I, if they don't know where they're at, trying to find where they were. And uh, after that there, I got to talk to one of my friends who actually went and, uh, well, and he actually built me a bee lining box. So I mean, this is a brand new, I've never even used it there with the slides and everything else there. But Tom Seeley, he talks about this in his, uh, explains the video and how this operates and works. But, uh, had a really good friend make this for me. It didn't cost me anything. It was really appreciative, and hopefully one day I'll get to use it. But uh, that's it for this video here. Uh, basically, I just want to talk about you as a beekeeper and furthering your knowledge. You know, this is the off season. You're not really in your hives. You got all, all the time you spent um, trying to make them survive. Hopefully, you're going to have a good, good, good season, and uh, uh, the bees will the bees will make it. Uh, I'll be putting some videos out, maybe some ideas of where, how, where I stand over the winter. I believe I have like 17 full-size colonies and four, uh, four or five, uh, I think at least four, maybe five double nukes, um, uh, nuke hives, double stack nuke hives set up there. So with queens, looking at 2021 queens for all the colonies. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm not exactly sure. It's just best luck. So I'm, I did the best I can, but we'll see what the, the bees are going to make it through there. Um, <clears throat> but for me, big goal for next year is comb honey. 
and uh, that's pretty much my main one is, is comb honey right now. Is I want to make sure I, I want to I want to produce comb honey, uh, not only great scale. I do really well on my on my liquid honey sales, but you know people ask for comb honey, and I want to try my hands at it. You know if I have some strong colonies um, and get them set up, we'll do all that. But that's one of the things I'm going to do later in another video here is talk about comb honey production, my plans. This, I'm going to explain to my game plan. Um, I please, when we get there, so please give me a lot of input, a lot of feedback, some things I'm missing. You know, if you're, if you're producing things, give me some direction. If you know some links uh, online, send them in the comments below. But um, that's it for me, man. I, I'm just trying to, that, that's the next thing. I've got all this equipment, got everything else there. I'm trying, to, I'm trying something new. So my next thing next year is comb honey production. Um, and we're going to do some things with some swarms and uh, snow grubbing and all that. So that's it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. One of my goals is to break the 1,000 subscribers. I've done that, and we're moving forward and progressing forward. But the other thing I want to touch base with you is I've got close to 100 videos on majority beekeeping in my library. So if you haven't already, please go check the video, click the videos, and then stream down and just look look what's out there. You know, and there may be things that you haven't searched or, or, or thinking about. You know, I've got different stuff that I've done over the year from building equipment, how to make your own stuff. You just little tips and tricks there so if you don't mind go ahead and click the old my old videos and, and see what I have there you know I take the time to put these videos out and basically it's all uh, trying to be, put some relative information some new information or some things that I'm doing with but like I says it's not uh, I'm not one way it's like you learn from my way you learn from this guy's way you learn from this guy's way and then you develop your own way and that's how I've done a lot of things so that's it for this video I want to thank you for watching thanks for subscribing until the next video thanks again bye bye